Yeah, it's uh, it's different now for us. I mean, after our reality show, five week reality show is over, and now it's a, a normal Saturday. Um, not normal when you're playing an SEC team on the road, but at the same time, it's a great opportunity. You know, there's uh, obviously some big challenges in front of us on for Saturday, but playing an early kickoff, noon kickoff for us, uh, for me, I'm excited about that. Get up and play, and I think our guys will be excited too. I mean, I, if you Polled most of our players. They'd be like, geez, yeah, I love playing SEC team or playing against the best to measure themselves. And that's what they get a chance to do this weekend. Their record is not great, but are they talent-wise? Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, it's, it's the most talented team we, we've played since I've been here. And I don't think it's even close on both sides of the ball. So, I mean, and they've lost. I mean, they're up 14-3 on the defending national champions. Well, and Georgia, everybody knows how good they are. And they lost a close one to Florida. They lost a couple other close ones. So they're, I mean, they're better than their record. Uh, but I, I mean, our guys know the challenge. I mean, our, you know, the one thing about our team, uh, the handful of seniors, we got a bunch of juniors. They're they're a pretty mature group, and but they also, I think, understand, watch the film. That, okay, this dude can run. This guy can throw. I mean, how big they are up front. The biggest thing for us is we got to control what we control and we can play better than what we have been. But we got to, you know, we got to continue to play hard and, and uh, not worry about the scoreboard. Don't look up there until the end of the fourth quarter and see what happens. Jabari Mack, uh, how's he doing? Yeah, he, yeah, Jamari had surgery this morning. Uh, surgery went well from what we understand. He'll be out for the remainder of the season and he was playing great. So um, we'll have a couple other corners that had to step up. And, be ready to go. And um, am I right? I'm thinking Derek got nicked up in the last game. Yeah, he'll be fine. Derek will be fine. You played some really good quarterbacks this year, obviously. That was a household name type guys. Spencer Rattler this week. Is there any similarities between him and some of the other guys in the league this year? Yeah, the big thing with Spencer is he seemed like he'd been there forever. I mean, he's he's a talented guy, but he's also been in their system for, for several years now. And I think he's playing really good football. I mean, he's he's a competitive guy, and he'd be fun to watch if you weren't playing him. But I think he's, you know, I I, I, mean, I think he's an uh, NFL guy, and you know, we've got to do the biggest thing for us defensively probably is to, to try to get him into some predictable situations third and long. Like every 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 team you play that if you can get him in third and long, and then you can do some some of your stuff defensively and. And uh, you know, I, our our defense is we're not very big, but we're pretty athletic. And so when we get our get get them into some third and long stuff, our athleticism can take, can help out a little bit there. So, but that's that you know easier said than done. But but Spencer is uh, I've kind of followed about his career. I mean, he come from Arizona, which I knew where, where high school he went to. Kind of followed him his whole career, and and uh, he's had a great career, he really has. Yeah, Ronnie came out of it good, which is good because Ronnie's probably our, you know, he's not probably, he's one of our fastest guys. And, you know, he was itching to get back here and, and uh, he gives us, you know, another dimension when he's when he's playing running. We play a lot of running backs, but Ronnie's probably our fastest. With Ron and Malik and PJ, like, is it almost like this is the offense you'd kind of envisioned throughout the offseason, finally having everybody kind of? Yeah, PJ was one that, you know, we, and we knew there was a bit that was a loss there, but QC was probably, you know, our I don't want to say our biggest, I mean, size wise, our biggest threat. And the guy that uh, it's not only that, he's one of the best stock blocking wide receivers that, that we've had, you know, and that I, I've had in a long time. I mean, he really takes a lot of pride in being a great perimeter blocker, which we ask those guys to do quite a bit. So having PJ back is good. Um, you know, Ronnie back and, you know, getting Malik healthy again. And, you know, I think he's, he should be good to go. And Anwar, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of roll them in there, all those guys. We'll play a lot more skill guys than we did. We didn't rotate. And it was probably – we probably should have tried to rotate more guys in earlier in the year. Um, but we're going to do it now. But is that – I'm just I'm just wondering, is that – was there some level of those first couple of weeks going, man, if we can just get all these guys out there? Yeah, part of it, you know, you were, we were – uh, and I was the concern I had was we'd go those five straight games in midweek and you have time to get anybody healthy. And we, you know, a normal schedule, you would have probably got some guys back. But, you know, we shortened some practices down. Uh, you know, we didn't get, you know, it was a couple weeks we didn't get guys banged up as much. But 
I think everybody's gone through that. I know South Carolina's gone through that. They're probably healthier this week than they've been in the last couple of weeks with some of their injuries. But you know, that's going to be part of the game. And uh, you know, we're you know, our true bye week isn't until next week. And so uh, it'll come at a good time for us because I'm I'm sure we'll we'll be able to use a couple extra days uh, after this game. What's your connection? Yeah, I know Frank first because we uh, competed against each other. He's at Virginia Tech, and I was at West Virginia, and then we were on various you know trips together, Nike trips and stuff like that. So I've known Shane, and then um, uh, we had when we had a place in Georgia, they did too. So we actually Shane and I played golf together, and just think the world of him as a person, as a coach, you know uh, who he is, what his family's all about. I think he's just phenomenal. So. He's he's uh, you know they've had a couple tough games this year like I said but that's he's done a lot of great things there and and he'll be a, a successful head coach for a long time it's in his DNA you know but it's also who he is I mean he didn't <coughs> he didn't get the South Carolina job because his last name was Beamer he got the South Carolina job because he earned it and he earned a lot of it he earned it the way he recruited and the way he coached there you know ten or twelve years ago he did a great job for for Coach Spurrier there so. Uh, he's earned all his success. When it comes to work on stuff like signals and disguising those, is that something that coaches mainly do before the season gets started? Do you do you adjust those? At some yeah, you point? do. You you got to have multiple signal guys, I think, and you got to be able to uh, have various ways. Okay, if they know your terminology, you got to change things up a little bit. You can get in huddles. You can get in sugar huddles. I mean, we don't huddle too much because. I always said, you know, who wants to watch a bunch of fat guys hold hands in a huddle, right? So I have to have to just call a play and run it, you know. But our 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 tempo goes fast enough that we, you know, there have been a couple of times where guys said, I think they know what this means or they know what this signal is, and you got to have an answer to that. Obviously, in game, it's sort of fair game to try to try to figure that stuff out. How I don't know how much energy. Do different teams kind of put into trying to figure out that stuff in the middle of the yeah, game? Yeah, I don't. I'm not, I guess if you're if they're uh, if they got a way to get TV copy, I mean everybody can get TV copies and watch it and try to decipher some things. Um, but I, I don't know how to to what depth because you you know you never know for sure. It's like I don't know. If you're talking about the Michigan thing, like well, it was a TCU game or something. If they know, if you know that they know. What you know, <laughs> you can use that against them. You know what I mean? Like, oh, every time you say this or every time you signal this, they're going to yell pass when really, okay, they know that. So we're going to make that same call and do a run. You know what I mean? You can kind of trick it up a little bit that way uh, too. The biggest thing for us because of our tempo, you know, we put everything in and faster. You know, we, you know, our, some of the words that we're using now are different than the words we used last year. And some of the signals we go in now are, signaling are signaled so fast that they don't have time to to decipher it and all that but i do think it's silly that we don't use the helmet communication i guess they're going to use it in bowl games this year some people have used it experimentally and in, in uh in the past but i mean that's a simple thing i think they should put it in all, every player's helmet not just a quarterback or a linebacker you know have the technology it's just a little thing put it in there and coaches can communicate uh you know, all the way, all the way uh, through, and you don't have to worry about cutting it off at ten seconds or nothing like that. So, you know, it seems like that's a, there's an easy solution to that. That we all you're spending enough money on all this other stuff. It doesn't seem like that would be a reason why. What's that? Yeah, there. I mean, there's uh, uh, there's answers to that that problem. I guess. I guess my is my, that even you kind of alluded to it, but just with how fast y'all go. Would it would that even be a concern if, if an opponent I don't know like y'all run plays so fast it seems like it'd be hard for an opponent to figure out what to watch the signal and then change what they're going to do right you know some people will change personnel oh well, they're running they're running the ball so they're going to put in a heavier personnel group or something like that if you're if you're a tempo team you know you can't really do that so uh, we're still I mean until they I don't know why they can change but I mean. We're always going to be a tempo team. That's part of our DNA, who we are. And I like to go – I don't know, we might be first in the country right now in plays. Somebody said we were first, Tennessee was second. But I, I want to be first by a wide margin. 
you know, I don't, I don't want it to be even close. But if that being said, you also, as a head coach, got to manage the clock. If I tell our guys, if we're ahead by two scores in the fourth quarter, now all of a sudden we're going to milk it. We're going to start, you know, eating that clock up. But up until that point, uh, we're not always going to go as fast as we can, but the plan is to go as fast as we can. Yeah, that's who we are. We're gonna we're gonna try to do it, and everybody knows it now. It's not when I'm not hiding it. I mean, they look at the stats, they look at the film, and so we're gonna. The key is though, it's not just you. Still got to be able to execute. You know what I mean? That so you can. You don't want to trick yourself. You don't want to put yourself where you're you're going fast and uh, so fast that you're cutting down on your ability to execute. My, my goal would be able to go as fast as we can, execute as well as we can. And so finding the balance between that is what we're constantly trying to do. As our guys grow up in the system, and I know that's a hard thing nowadays with transfer portals and all this stuff, as guys grow up in our system, you one, you'll be able to play faster and execute better, not just on offense, but on defense. You know, the guys on defense, you know, they'll, you know, longer in their system, they'll anticipate what check Coach Alley wants to go to, or what defense we want to go to if they're in this look. And so as they grow up in the system, you know, they'll be able to anticipate defensively what call is going to be made and on offense what call is going to be made. And that's that's the part that the first couple of years in it, you know, uh, especially now with our roster and the way we're doing our roster, you know, it, that's the hardest. As they grow up in their system, which is a new term now in college football, how many guys can grow up in the system, that's what you want. They've had a lot of different offensive line combinations. Uh, does that make it tough to sort of to scout that group for y'all, or does nah, it? Nah, hell, they're going to be five of them, you know. So, <laughs> and all five of them are going to be SEC recruited, you know what I mean? And the five backups will be SEC recruited guys, and the five backups behind those backups will be SEC recruited guys. So, I mean, every offensive lineman on the roster would probably have been guys we would offered, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know. You can, and I think it's the same way. You all, you, you couldn't if you looked at their their lineup now and their lineup two weeks ago and six weeks ago. To me, they all look the same. Uh, so they they they're gonna have they're gonna have the same way on defense line. They're gonna have some guys. I think the hardest thing is not so much for us. Look at them. Is that do they change their all? Have they changed their offense at all based on who's in there? Uh, whether it's on the O line or the skill positions and and you, you know most teams don't. They're gonna run what they run irregardless of – only thing that will possibly change is if you had a different quarterback, you know, and had a different skill set, you might change what you do offensively. But uh, and Spencer's been there the whole year, so uh, what they do is what they do. Any – in a game like this, any big picture coaching changes you make, or do you just kind of do every – you know, do the same thing you've done that's gotten you here? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, I mean, it's I, – I was mentioning it earlier to the folks who are doing the game on TV is that, you know, we've played uh, well at times, and but we haven't had one game where we've played well in all three phases for all four quarters. And, you know, the opponent has something to do with that. But we can play We can play better. Now, the thing our guys have done is that we've never panicked, whether behind at halftime or the end of game situation. Our guys always played hard and didn't didn't worry about what just happened. And that, that's been a nice part. You know, we've, we've won some games at the end because I think we just kept playing hard. And the harder you play, the luckier you get. You know, and so our guys have, have played hard all the way and believed all the way. And then, you know, we won some games at the end. So that's, you know, part of our success this year has been because our guys didn't worry about the last play. They kept playing the next play. And that's that's been a big help to us. Uh, you know, J-Rock got um, honored by the conference this week. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I I think if I'm correct, y'all have nine, nine times y'all got that. And I think the next closest team in the conference is at four or five. So y'all are significantly at. Yeah, that's a lot more than games they predicted us to win, too. (laughs) I mean, we were uh, we weren't even in the top half in the projections. Right. We made the top half possible. That's what I tell everybody. We were I think we were picked next to last. Well, uh, we're not going to be that. You know, so I don't know what the projection is, but, you know. And we don't really talk, J-Rock can tell you, we talk, I think maybe in the beginning of August, we talked about, okay, you know, it's our first year in a conference. You know, our goal would be to, to compete for the conference championship, even if we're not allowed to. It could be bowl eligible, even though you'd have to get, you know, some situations to happen to go to a bowl. 
And that's it. We didn't talk about it once the game started. We didn't talk about those goals. We just talked about who we're playing next and what we got to do to win. And so that it's the need to get to seven wins and and have a chance to be one of the top teams in the conference and have a chance to go to the bowl game. And hopefully that'll be out there. But our focus now is playing an SEC team on the road in the SEC stadium and, and then a couple conference games to end up with. But it's been – I've really enjoyed coaching the guys and, and um, the culture, I guess that's – I know you guys have heard me say that, that we thought we established last year has carried through this year. And whether it's J-Rock or – Chris Hardy or whoever else is, you know, J. Ro Harris, all the guys we've had that were here big, played a big part in last year's season have helped carry that into this year as well. And any new guys we've had, you know, we didn't like we adapted to them. They had to, if they had to adapt, they had to adapt to us and to the culture we have and we expect here. And that's unwavering. That's not going to change us. As long as I'm the head coach here and we're, you know, how we practice, how we do things, the culture that we have is going to be way it is right now. Is it hard to have culture care over in a year when you have NIL in the transfer portal? Oh, yeah. I can see it all the time. I, I, in my opinion, I watch a team say, man, they're, you know, gosh, it seems like they got – if they put it all together, they're going to be pretty good. Well, maybe they don't have the right culture. You know, um, that's – but or they have bad luck. You know, and that's some, something to do with it too. But uh, I feel good about where our culture is. And I, and when J-Rock tell you, we – we coach them hard. I don't. There's never a time, and I'll tell you this. And I don't mind saying it publicly. There's. I told our coaches. There's never a time when one of our players loafs or is soft that we don't call them out. I'm talking about on Tuesday practice, Wednesday practice, or Saturday game, or game day, whatever it is. If if we see it, and we should see it, that's our job as coaches. They're loafing on the play, whatever. You call out, no matter who it is. And I did. That's just one part of our culture, but that. That is unwavering, you know. If, if and I said that our job as coaches is to make sure we see it every time. If a guy loafs or is soft, he's called out. And I want our players to have the same kind of pride. There's not they see a younger guy or somebody not playing as hard as he should. That ain't what we are. That's not having a hard edge. That's not earning success. And those are that if that's if culture is the word that defines that, that's that's who we are. And that all that always be the case. Our guys here. We're going to play an SEC team. Um, it's going to always be a bigger challenge when you play these guys. That's going to be bigger, stronger, faster than you. Um, it's a it's a challenge every week just playing college football because everybody you know have have great players, but it's a great challenge for us. We're going to the SEC. We're playing the SEC stadium, so it's going to be fun. As a guy from Cameron County, grew up around Jacksonville State, and came here as an FCS program. How does it feel to be able to be a part of that progression? And that transition into where the program is now? Um, for me, just growing up, coming up here every weekend, um, it has been fun because I seen when we was at the Lloyds and we was just, you know, just playing football and coming up here. We was taking it serious, but not as serious as we are, are now. But um, it's been fun seeing the growth. Uh, what, is, what does it mean to be honored by the conference as the defensive player of the week? Um, it's just standards of Jacksonville State. We just play hard. Um, and whatever the awards come with it, we just you know we just look at it, put it behind us, and we got to play the next game. You get a little more juiced when it's an SEC opponent compared to somebody else in the conference. No, nah, I wish I would get more juice because like the standard, like when we come out and play, like it's every week we got to play hard, no matter what who it is. So if it's SEC, ACC, anybody, we got to come out and play hard because every team gonna come out and play hard, no matter what. So yeah. Could you? I don't know. When you decided you wanted to come here, could you have imagined playing on these these kind of stages? You know, and I, I know y'all, you know, you you played at Florida State, so, mm -hmm. but like, you know, these big FPS games on national TV, now going to South Carolina, like, I don't know, did you ever imagine anything like this? Oh uh, yes, um, I really don't be looking at the teams as like, yeah, they SEC, they bigger, faster, stronger, but I mean, at the end of the day, we all the same age, 18, 19 year old, 20 year old kids, so like. You just got to wake up and play football. For me, it's just all about playing football and just waking up and having fun and going to play the game of football. So, it really, I don't look at it as like, yeah, they're the biggest team all the time. But, like, I mean, of course, yeah. But, nah, you don't. It's, yeah, it's exciting. That's it. When you look at film, 
obviously they've had a lot of different guys rotated on offensive line. Mm-hmm. Does that change the way you watch the film, though, when there's different guys in? Or? No, I really don't change it because the same way they would slide in protection, you know, in week one, they're going to slide protection the same way. The same way the back go the opposite way, it's going to be the same no matter who the guy is. They can't change their offense for who really on the field. They can, but the personnel is still the same because they recruited the same 6'5", 340-pound tackle. That's the second string. So all the guys going to be the same size. and It's just can they get the job done. When you have guys of this size, anything you sort of think about I need to do differently going against guys like this? Oh, no, just follow Coach Allen's scheme. Because whatever he scheme up, whatever he got for us to do, it's going to work. I mean, like, but of course, I look at some guys and like, yeah, he big, he bigger than me. But every guy bigger than me. So it's just like, yeah, every move I work is going to be for a guy that's bigger than me that's going to be, you know, five or six inches or seven, maybe sometimes taller than me. So it's just, yeah, it come with it. Coach Allen going to scheme it up the right way for it. will be just fine. Oh, uh, every game, yeah, every game is my advantage because they got to come get me. I ain't got to go to them. So the thing about it is, either I can run past them and try to go through them and see can they come down and try to block me. But yeah, you think you surprise guys sometimes? Oh, uh, when you say surprise, what you mean like like, like small, you think man. guys look at you and they kind of they're like, ah, oh, I don't I'll, have to worry uh, about him. And week in and week out, yeah, every week probably. Um, but I mean, just I got to play hard no matter what, like by size. But I mean, this has been since I was in high school. I mean, I, I played nose guard in high school. So like, I've been a smaller guy always, even no matter what I was playing at. So yeah. Do you, are you, do you feel like you're playing better the last couple of weeks? Or is it maybe just Allie's scheme has kind of been like, just worked out where maybe you're going to be a little more productive than you, than you were earlier? Um, both. Um, his scheme always been great for me. I just ain't. I, this, the last two, three weeks, I have been playing way. I've been playing harder mentally, and I've been locked in very more than I have the first couple of weeks of the season. Yeah. What's it like playing for Coach Allen? Um. What it's like playing for him, like Coach Rich, I say it's a standard. Like no matter like who it is, what it is, it's a standard. Like it's Coach Allen. You know what Coach Allen? He all about his business. I mean, like I come up here like at nighttime. It's like 11, 10 o'clock at night. They still in here, so. When he come, when you come in at practice and they get mad, you know why they get mad because like while we at home laying down in the bed, like they up here like studying film, while we at home five or six hours, then they be up here at six o'clock in the morning. So it's just like a standard. Like they up, they be up here twenty four seven. So what's Ali like if y'all make a mistake? Um, I mean you gonna make a mistake. So like he, he accepted, it, but like if we don't went over and, and talked about it so many times, like why are you making the same mistake? You can't make the same mistake, but like. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake, fix it, don't let it be a problem. Like, keep that driven on. It's like, you know, I, I've seen what Richard's like. You know, he's obviously very animated. Is Would you say Ali's similar? Is he more quiet? No, nah, he's more of a quiet. Coach Richard, right, don't speak his mind no matter <laughs> what. But uh, Coach Ali, like, I mean, he speak his mind, but, like, he is more of, like, call you to the side, like, you know, just talk to you. But before you get to the sideline with Coach Ali, you already know you messed up. So, you know you finna, you know, get it before you get to the sideline. So. That's just what it is. You moved around stuff like that, bro. Have you different spots? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, all about the scheme, what Coach Allen and, and his and his staff feel like is what's best for the team. So, yeah, sometimes you see we like everybody move around up front. It just it it, it makes it easier for us to play. Everybody, you know, athletic like Coach Richard said, we, we ain't the biggest guy. So, if we move around, it make it easier for us. Y'all lined up one time last week. There was nobody from tackle to tackle. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. <laughs> come get us, basically. That's what it is. Like, if you, if, if you come get us or we just going to run past you, that's what it is. That's the scheme. I've never seen that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, Coach, Coach Allen, like, he literally, he literally got the best, like, he, he a guru, like, for real, real talk. Um, y'all have had different points this year where you've had some younger offensive linemen kind of mix in and help out. Have you seen those guys improve as, as the year's gone on, like, from maybe where they were before the season started? Oh, uh, definitely. Um. You got bars with all those guys. And when you play against them in fall camp, you can see that improvement from just last year. But um, even at the guard position, I think it's Cam Griffin, all them guys. They're they really good, especially like Coach Tricky. You got Cam. I mean, you got like Traylon Brown, like got a guy in those guys. Like they're going to be good. And with Coach uh, Tricky coaching them up, they're going to be straight on. Were there some times back before the season where y'all kind of felt like, oh, you know, like you could, because y'all, Y'all were more experienced where you felt like you could kind of beat them on certain stuff, and at some point they started to kind of catch up to y'all a little bit. Uh, I mean, even in fall camp, we really don't be going against our offense really like that during um, during the season. But like, I mean, it's gonna be always be a challenge because they 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 good. They just like you know they go they they gonna be good all the time. So yeah, sometimes we win. It was fifty fifty in fall camp. So yeah. The tempo of the takeaway did that help you on Saturdays and games when the opponents? 
<clears throat> um, definitely it helped because, um, you know, like most teams line up, get tired and, and, and practice and, and can got time to breathe a split second. But when you're going against Coach Richard offense, you don't have time to breathe. But really, like with us not going against them in practice right now, um, Coach Alley, he keeps the tempo high down there and, and, and scouts. We really is not even – like, it's not a scout here. Like, and then I scout. Like, I was telling some people last week, like, our scout team really could be somewhere starting right now. Like, just going against them, they, they line up and go fast. And for them to be learning a whole other team offense in a week, they look really good, like for real. Anyone stand out in particular on that scout team? Just for how they've been? All of them, real talk, like all of them. They play fast, they don't pout about being down there. They just line up and come play football. You know, I get to go back home to South Carolina, uh, from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, my brother played at South Carolina. So, uh, so honestly, uh, I grew up at williams Bryce Stadium, you know, uh, always there from about 2005 to like 2008, you know? So it's gonna be a cool experience for me. Were there moments when, especially when you were younger and, and your, you know, your brother was playing, were safe to say there were moments when you probably just imagine, oh, what it would be like to play on that field? For yeah, you? yeah, definitely. Um, I always envisioned myself being a Gamecock, uh, but I ended up being a Jacksonville State Gamecock. So um, yeah, so it's, you know, it, like especially like looking at the pictures of me when I was younger, like leading up to this season, uh, seeing my brother, like, shoulders above me, like, huge, and I'm, like, five, six. I always wanted to be like him. So uh, seeing, seeing those pictures and stuff really reminded me, like, yeah, I've, I'm living the dream. Like, I'm, I get to play at williams Bryce, So it's, it's a cool experience. Have, uh, have you already heard from, like, family and, and, and stuff this week? Yeah, yeah. I'm over here You're trying to get extra tickets. I'm. I don't know, y'all. I, <laughs> I don't know if I can get them extra tickets, but uh, hopefully, like a lot of people are coming out uh, from high school and like family, uh, immediate family, some distant relatives coming out. Uh, it's gonna be a cool experience for them too. Any family reach out and say, "Hey, we hope you play well, but we're rooting for South Carolina." Um, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I think everybody <laughs> is in my corner on this one. When you look at the the lines of old. Really off season. How do you kind of um, kind of assess how you guys have, have played throughout the year? Because you, you play some really good defense. Right. So how how do you kind of assess your y'all's play here? Um, I feel like our offensive line has been playing really really well. Um, that was like one of the main things that people were worried about how our offensive line was going to adjust. Um, obviously we have uh, one of the greatest coaches, uh, Coach Trickett. So he had us prepared mentally. Like yeah, this is going to be a different. Uh, a different set of people from what we played last year. Um, but I think everybody's held their own. You've had several younger guys mix in at different points. Just what's it been like being able to, to, to you know, have guys come in and, and, and not just be the starting five necessarily all the time? Right. Um, you know, with the younger guys, I wasn't really too worried about them. Uh, like Cade, he, he, he came in against uh, Middle Tennessee. He's been around for a long time. Bosley was already prepared last year, but they redshirted him. Um, so, so guys were ready. Guys, guys were ready to be plugged in wherever they needed. Uh, and Coach Trickett does a good job with in practice having guys in different spots. Anybody that we haven't really seen this year that you think uh, would fans would be surprised with with how well they, they would um, play? Yeah, uh, Davion Harley, Cam Griffin, and uh, Katie Arnold. Uh, all three of those guys are, are going to be really, really good uh, within these next, well, especially next year. Uh, I think they're going to be really well. Um, just South Carolina specifically, like, what, what do y'all, if y'all are going to be successful this week, what do y'all have to do? Uh, I mean, we got to give Zion time. Uh, we got to, got to be able to run the ball. Uh, and they're a really good defense. Uh, the, the record shows two and six, but. They're not a two and sixteen to me. Uh, Tonka Hemingway, he's a he's a dog. Uh, uh, Debo Williams, he's a dog for sure. Uh, great linebacker, uh, great DBs all over the field. A lot of very athletic, all around the best defense that we're going to play this season. Uh, you know, you mentioned a couple guys. Anything they do specifically that makes you say they're the best defense? Though? Yeah, uh, Debo's just always he's all over the field. Uh, you, he just pops out on film all the time. Um, Tonka, he moves really well. Uh, a lot of those guys, just all of them move really well. So we've got to be prepared this week. Do you feel like um, – I feel like Zion 
looks, I don't know if it's more comfortable or confident the last couple weeks. Have you, I don't know, do you feel that way? Do you feel like he looks different lately? Uh, I mean, I think, I think so too. I, I can agree with that. Uh, Zion, uh, I think he's a confidence quarterback. So like when he has a great week of practice, he's going to end up playing really, really well. And that's where, where it starts at in practice. See, Ben, I know last year <clears throat> um, he had some health stuff that kind of kept him from going full go to practice. Uh, has he, I don't know, do you think maybe that's part of it is maybe he's been able to be a little more involved? Than, uh, possibly. Than uh, I think I think he's really just uh, taking the practice extremely seriously. I think not to say that he wasn't before, but he's still, you know, he's he's super locked in. Uh, and that, that goes with all our quarterbacks. All of our quarterbacks are always locked in, whether it's Logan, whether it's Fry, whether it's Moot. You know, everybody is, is locked in and ready to go. When did you when did y'all find out Ron was going to be able to play? I found out two days before FIU. He was joking with me. And he was like, yeah, bro, I'm going to play. I'm like, all right, bro, all right. <laughs> and then I saw that he was traveling, so I was like, okay, so there might be some truth in this. And, uh, yeah, he ended up playing. So that was that was crazy to see Ryan back out there so quickly. How – I mean, because I know Richard said when it happened, there was – it was maybe six weeks, but it might be the season. Yeah. How great was it just to be able to see him get back out there? Oh, no, nah, it, was, it was super cool to see Ron get back out there. And um, I, I knew it was going to be a touchdown as soon as Ron got up out of the guy and got into the game. Um, yeah, it was cool to see him out there. Is that something that, like, you know, I know y'all want everybody to do well, but that kind of y'all especially wanted Ron to have a great game just with yeah, the injury yeah, and everything. Definitely. Uh, I didn't think – I was telling Ron the week after Coastal, I was like, man, I can't believe I'm not going to get to be able to block for you no more. And he ended up coming back. So, and yeah, nah, we, I wanted to see Ron succeed for sure. Everybody. I want to see all our running backs succeed.